Hello folks, I'm out here in my barn again this afternoon, as usual, it's where I make most of my videos, I'm just more comfortable here than I am anywhere else, at least for the time being, I think that's going to change, but anyway, I hope all of you are doing well, um, I'm actually sitting down, I came across the deal on a new stool. I don't know how much of it you can see, but it's one of those tall bar stool type chairs. It's got a back on it and all that. Um, it was actually free. Um, so I figured I might as well make use of it, considering as I've had a problem with my left knee and hip here lately couple of weeks it just won't seem to straighten out but anyway all that aside there's a couple of points that I want to get to in this video it's uh what is it is September the 21st is almost sundown Shabbat's about to begin and I'm actually kind of looking forward to it this week um not that I don't always look forward to it but at least for the moment, you know, I've got a driving intention to study a particular thing tomorrow, which is not going to be talked about here in this video. But the two things that I do want to cover is, one, one of the things that I mention a lot you know, when I'm opening my videos, I'll say something like, well, I'm out here in my barn again today, and I've been working on such and such a thing, or I've been cleaning up in my tool room, or, you know, cleaning up in my barn, trying to get scrap together and stuff like that. Well, cleaning up is a constant thing in my life. I'm always cleaning or straightening something somewhere. Well, not literally always, but, you know, and even when people want me to help them fix things and, and um, stuff like that, they bring it up here for us to work on it at my house. Even during the process of working on whatever it is I'm working on, you know, as I walk past something that I see out of place, I'll pick it up and put it where it goes. You know, not to be taking time away from the person that I'm helping. But, you know, if, like if you walk by your cutting torch, you know, and you see there's a striker laying on the bench. Well, you just, you're, staying, you're, you're right there. You pick the striker up, stick it in the, uh, in the tool tray on the, on the torch cart, and you keep on walking. You know, most times you don't even have to stop. Or, you know, you check to make sure your valves are closed on your tanks on the way by the cutting torch. Just little simple things like that, you know. Walking back through the barn, you know, and I come walk past my, my bench that's got the uh, vise on it. A pair of pliers and a tape measure laying on it right now that I was using earlier today. I didn't put them back in the toolbox. I should have, but at some point next week, I'll be out here tinkering around doing something and I'll pick them up and carry them back in there on my way in there to get another tool for whatever it is I might be tinkering on. And the reason that is important is because everyone should be doing that always. Not only in their daily life with the physical things, you know, you're in the kitchen, you get all the dishes washed and put them in the drainer, and well, they sit there in the drainer, which I leave mine in the drainer most of the time anyway. I currently live alone, um, so I don't use many dishes. There's just no point in putting them up because I usually just use the same stuff over and over and over again. I don't have a very large variety in the things that I normally eat. In other words, I ate a lot of canned stuff that goes in the microwave, so. But anyway, you know, not only should we all be doing that sort of thing in our daily lives with 
dishes or clothes, knickknacks in the house, you know, whatever. But we should also be in a constant state of cleaning up our spiritual self as well. And, you know, that means continually evaluating the things that we think and believe against Scripture. You know, not to say that the things that you believe are wrong or the things that I believe are right or wrong. For instance, we know that no one of us born of man and woman, you know, not the Messiah, he's excluded from this, but not a single one of us humans other than the Messiah will be saved by our own righteousness. We know that. That's a fact. So we have to rely on the Messiah's righteousness. So that's something that we absolutely know to be unquestionable fact according to scripture you know and that's according to torah and the prophets and the new testament so it's all through scripture but even so we know that to be unquestionable fact we should still not evaluate that specifically but we should spend time contemplating those things not all the time should we contemplate that one specific thing but that's just an example you know we should be contemplating all the things that we believe all the time against scripture you know take something out in the world um being under the rule of a government, which in our country, the government's not supposed to be ruling the people. The people are supposed to be ruling the people through the government. And we see that our political or governmental system is broken. It's not working the way that it's supposed to be working. So those sorts of things we should be evaluating against scripture also because all of us have a political belief you know and i'm sure somebody's going to watch this and think well i don't have a political belief i don't believe we should be voting or anything like that it's just a waste of time okay well that is your political belief you believe that voting is a waste of time and that you just you shouldn't even bother with doing it Hey, I really do like this new stool, and I'm, I thank Yahweh that he put me in a position to acquire it today because it's just going to go nicely out here in this barn. You know, I can sit right at my little uh, bench and work on chainsaws and small hydraulic cylinders and, you know, just any any little small knickknack that I might be working on, I can sit right at my bench, right in this on this chair and work on it. This really good find and, and I thank Yahweh greatly for it anyway back on to point sorry about that little divergence there um you know and just like talking about the cleaning up around here you know that's that just goes right along with continually evaluating the things that we believe spiritually because if you come across something that um, you believe and, and you learn that that belief was in error, then that's cleaning up, isn't it? You find out something that you believe was wrong, like, you know, I used to believe that Christmas was celebrating the birth of Messiah. I know that's not the case now so I was wrong so I've cleaned that up that's or Yahweh has cleaned that up or he's given me the power to clean it up so that's no longer in my life so that's how you know my little anecdote about me being in a steady state of cleaning up is relevant but uh, I'm just gonna let that ride I think I've, I've circled that point enough that everybody gets it there's um another thing that i have actually been accused of 
Satanism when talking about this. And the funny thing about it is I don't even take it the same direction that most other people take it, which I'll cover that in a minute. Or not, maybe not most other people, but I, there's a large group of other people that take it to a wrong place. So, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, and I'm reading from the King James Version. If, if you prefer a different version, by all means, you know, get it out and look up. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, or in the, of the, in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Alright, so the seasons one is easy. You know, during certain seasons of the year, we see certain star groupings in the sky. And I see, let there be lights in the firmament. Okay, and it divides the day from the night. All right, that's easy too. The sun during the day, the moon at night. All right, so there's two things that are relatively simple to understand. Well, it also says, let's see, let them be for signs and seasons and days and years. Uh-oh. Well, wait a minute. Didn't we just cover seasons? Well, yeah, I did. And what I said there was correct. You know, it's not an error. We do know the seasons. They're the four seasons of the year. Uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Or autumn, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there are other seasons that we are to use the stars to know. The problem is, is we don't speak Hebrew, most of us, and for the few of us who do speak Hebrew, which I'm not one of them, we don't know the original Hebrew names of the stars and the constellations and whatnot. And I know some of you are thinking that I'm talking about the pagan zodiac and I'm actually not because the pagan zodiac is actually Lucifer's twisting of Yahweh's God's um, intent. So I'll go to that now. That's actually in a different book. It's in Job chapter 38, verse 31, 32, and 33. Okay? It says, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Matzeroth in his season or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? All right, so... To focus on that word Matzeroth for a moment, most people know it as Zodiac, and Zodiac is pagan, you know, the word is pagan, the concept is pagan, and the, the pagan use of it, which is called astrology, not to be mistaken with astronomy, okay, two different words, two completely different things. You know, and astrology is people reading your palms or looking at the stars to tell you what your future is going to be, if you're going to get rich, and, and there's nothing to that. It's just uh, uh, the devil has twisted Yahweh's Matzeroth into the zodiac and astrology. All right, so what the Matzeroth is is if you know the names of the stars in Hebrew, the Hebrew names of the stars, because most of us, whether we speak Hebrew or not, should know that each individual Hebrew letter has a meaning. Like um, 
Bethel. You know, Beth, which would be Bet, is house, and El is Elohim, right? So Bethel is the house of Elohim. Um, so if you know the Hebrew names of the stars in order from brightest to least bright, it will actually tell you a story. And as an example of that, there's a genealogy in Genesis chapter 5, I think it is. We'll go to it, and I'll read that genealogy off and then explain it to you. Let's see, Genesis chapter 5. Actually, I'm not going to read the genealogy because it's 32 verses. Well, roughly, somewhere there about. And um, I just, it would take too long to read it all. But if you go through and you take each one of those names, each one of those names has a meaning. Um, so the first verse says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Okay. Male and female created him. And Adam lived 130 years and begot sons in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Begot a son. I'm sorry. All right. And Seth. Okay. Well, what does Seth mean? Well, if you'll remember, when Eve gives birth to Seth, she says, I'm going to call him Seth because God hath appointed me another seed or, or something other like that. So Seth means appointed, right? And that definition is taken straight out of the Bible. And if you go and find whatever that word is in Hebrew, Seth, you know, I don't know how it's pronounced or spelled or anything else in Hebrew, I'm sure that if you look out, look at each one of those letters, somehow or another it works out to mean appointed. So if you go through that genealogy, it says man, which, because Adam means man, all right, and Seth means appointed. So you take each one of those names, write out their meanings, and you, it says man appointed. Well, if you go on and find the names, the meanings of each one of those names, the genealogy reads, man appointed, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to look it up. All right, man appointed mortal sorrow, the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring the despairing rest and comfort. Okay. So what does that mean? It means Yahweh became a man, or no, it means that, that man, because of sin, is mortal and will die. Okay, so and in that there is sorrow. But Yahweh will come down and teach that his death will bring comfort to the despairing or rest and comfort comfort and rest um, so Yahweh comes down and becomes a man Yeshua and teaches that his death you know because he even tells the Pharisees destroy this temple in three days I will rebuild it you know and that are those are words of Yeshua, Jesus in English. Um, and what that meant was they are going to kill the Messiah, and so he's dead. But then he, on the third day he rises. So his death pays the penalty for our transgression. So, in that, we're comforted, and one day we'll rest in Him eternally. So, that's Genesis chapter 5. Um, 
but to get back to talking about the Matsuroff, you know, I, I bring this up, or I brought this up because um, it kind of displays how Yahweh likes weaving messages into creation or light or you know he when he created everything he wove messages into it so that being said if you know the names of the stars in order from brightest to least bright and in the first month of the year which is September or it, it happens during September um, is when the first biblical month is. Which actually I think it happens at the tail end of August to be truthful about it. And at the risk of y'all thinking that this is divine in the stars and it is not, I promise I am not trying to, to look and see what fortunes the future holds. But the constellation that is in the sky over Jerusalem at that time is Virgo. And what is Virgo? Virgo is the virgin. And where did the Messiah come from? He was birthed from a virgin. Now, to further debunk the zodiac demonic doctrine, um, we were all taught as children in school that those particular groupings of stars, take Virgo for example, um, if you connect them together in a certain way, then it draws out the picture of a woman. No, it doesn't. Go look at the constellation of Virgo. Draw lines between those stars. It doesn't look anything like a woman. Period. Um, and incidentally, you know, I'm going to skip through all the rest of the months because Virgo is really about the only one of two that I'm sure of. And the other one of those is actually Leo. All right. And Leo happens when? In August, right before Virgo. So Leo is the last constellation over Jerusalem during that time of the year, what we call August. All right, and what is one of the titles of our Messiah? The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. And I'll say it again for Leo. Go and look it up, see all the stars in that constellation, and try to make a picture of a lion out of those stars. You can't do it. You know, and then there are all the other ones, Cancer and Libra and all of those. And so the pictures are not given because of the connect the dots of the stars. The pictures are given as part of the redemption story that's written in the stars according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. So, another thing to, to consider is um, don't try to predict what's going to happen for any one of you who somehow is able to go out and find out what all the Hebrew names of the stars are, how they're correctly spelled in Hebrew, and what they mean and all of that. Don't try to predict the future based on those things because I think it was the 28th day and I just, I don't remember what month it was. I don't even remember if it was this year or last year, but there was a big to-do because the sun and the moon and, and a bunch of other stuff were supposed to all be in some sort of conjunction with Virgo over Jerusalem you know, and it was supposed to be the the um, predicting of some major event. And you see what happened there, don't you? Nothing. So, um, just understand that, that 
you know, don't try to predict what is going to happen based on positions of stars or anything like that because that is astrology. And, you know, a simpler way, the simplest way I know to say this, and then I'm going to close out this video because it's, it's way longer than I wanted it to be. But, um, and for those of you who have stuck around to the end, I appreciate it greatly. I, I, I really do. Um, I don't, they're, they're, the only benefit that I get from doing these videos is the hope that someone will learn something that will bring them closer to the Father through them. And even there, I don't take credit for it. it it's all Yahweh's work. So, and I can't predict the future. I can't tell you what I'm going to do an hour from now. Short, uh, hopefully I'm going to have these boots off and be out of the shower and eating supper and all that. But, um, I never intend to make any kind of money on any of these videos. That is not my point, purpose, and goal. My point, purpose, and goal is to serve Yahweh. And that's it. So, His will be done. But anyway, like I said, I'm getting ready to close this out, and I hope that each of you all is doing well. Much, much, much better than I'm doing, and I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You know, better than I deserve. And that is Scripture. It doesn't say that specifically in Scripture, but it certainly implies it. Because according to Scripture, what does it say? says none are worthy how does it say it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh right that's what it says so by the simple fact that I'm still allowed to live and breathe and walk on this earth that in and of itself I'm doing better than I deserve so is everyone else but uh, remember Acts chapter 17 verses 10 and 11 uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, Proverbs 18.13, and Proverbs 18.21. I hope to see each and every one of you in the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh bless.